Hi and welcome to this video with a summary of the main rules in the standard IFRS 5 non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. What's the main purpose of IFRS 5 or why is it here? Well, if some company plans to sell some assets and stops certain activities or stops business in certain areas, well, investors and other related stakeholders should know about it, isn't it? And therefore, IFRS 5 tells us to present both assets held for sale and discontinued operations separately in the financial statements. And within the next few minutes, we'll take a look at the main points and rules inside. I'm Sylvia of IFRSbox.com and I help people understand and simplify IFRS. I have created the IFRS kit, a complex IFRS course for you, plus lots of free IFRS materials, so you're welcome to check them out at IFRSbox.com. The standard IFRS 5 was issued in 2004 and it's applicable for the period starting on or after 1st January 2005. But, of course, there were some minor changes as other standards developed. IFRS 5 focuses on two main areas. The objective number one is to specify the accounting treatments for assets held for sale. And the objective number two is to set the presentation and disclosure of discontinued operations. And we will focus on each of these two areas separately. IFRS 5 applies to all identifiable assets and disposal groups with some measurement exceptions. Well, therefore, whether you deal with property, associate, long-term bonds, line of business, biological assets, you should present them under this standard or to show them in the financial statements under these standards if they meet conditions. You should not measure them all under IFRS 5, but we will explain exceptions a bit later. Let's talk about assets held for sale first. Let's explain some classification rules or when you should classify your asset or a disposal group as held for sale. Non-current assets or disposal groups shall be classified as held for sale when their carrying amount will be recovered through a sale rather than through a continuing use. Clear enough? If you plan to sell a non-current asset, then you should classify it as held for sale. The only exception is when you sell non-current assets in your primary business, for example, when you are a car dealer. In this case, cars are inventories under IS2 and not assets held for sale under IFRS 5. What is a disposal group? Well, sometimes companies plan to sell or discontinue a group of assets and liabilities in a single transaction, and this is called a disposal group. It's, for example, when you sell a whole division of a company. How do we assess that assets carrying amount will be recovered through sale and it should be classified as asset held for sale? First of all, it must be available for sale in its present conditions, so no major adjustments are necessary and a sale must be highly probable. And this happens when a management is committed to a plan to sell the asset and an active program to locate the buyer has been initiated. Further, the asset must be actively marketed for sale at a price that is reasonable in relation to its current fair value. And the sale should be completed within one year from the date of classification, while the changes to a plan of sale are unlikely. Well, sometimes you would seek shareholders' approval in some countries. IFRS 5 then contains some more clarification of those rules and also analogical rules apply to a situation when an asset is held for distribution to owners and not for sale. Now be careful because assets or disposal groups or operations that you plan to abandon do not qualify for classification as held for sale because they will be recovered through their continuing use, not through a sale. But you would still need to present some of them as discontinued operations. It means that yes, they might be reported separately as discontinued operations, but you would not measure them as assets held for sale. So how should we measure assets held for sale? Well, before I tell you the details, please note that the rules do not apply to defer tax assets under IS-12, assets from employee benefits under IS-19, financial assets under IFRS-9, 
Non-current assets measured using fair value model under IS40. Non-current assets measured at fair value less cost to sell under IS41, that's agriculture. And contractual rights from insurance contracts under IFRS 4. And there are only measurement exceptions. It means that if you decide to sell a financial asset, for example, and you meet the conditions, you can classify it as an asset held for sale and you present it as such, but you do not measure it under this standard, IFRS 5, you measure it under IFRS 9. For all other assets classified as held for sale, the main principle is measure them at lower of their carrying amount and their fair value less cost to sell or the fair value less cost to distribute if it's an asset for distribution to owners. So how should we do it? Well, let's break it down to what you should do before classification and after classification. With regard to asset itself or a disposal group itself, Immediately before you classify it as held for sale, you should measure it in line with the applicable standard. So apply normal rules. For example, just measure property plan and equipment in line with IS 16, whatever method you applied. After you classify an asset as held for sale, you should measure it at lower of its carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. What about the impairment? Again, before assets classification as held for sale, you measure its impairment in line with applicable standards, for example, IS 36 for property plan and equipment. You should recognize any impairment loss in profit or loss and also to other comprehensive income if applicable. For example, if you measured your property plan and equipment using revaluation model under IS 16, then you would recognize any impairment loss as a reduction of a revaluation surplus in other comprehensive income first. After classification, you calculate the impairment loss as a difference between assets adjusted carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell, and you always recognize it in profit or loss. No revaluation surplus this time. IFRS 5 contains some more rules about measurement, but you should always remember that you do not charge any depreciation after you classified an asset as held for sale. None. Now, let's talk about the second topic of IFRS 5, discontinued operations. What is it? It is a component of an entity that has either been disposed of or is classified as held for sale and it represents separate major line of business or geographical area of operations. It is a part of a plan to dispose it of, or it is a subsidiary acquired exclusively to resale. So what is a component of an entity? Well, that would be a part of a company that you are able to distinguish from the rest. In other words, it's a cash generating unit or a group of cash generating units. Well, let me remind you IS 36, okay? So what shall we do once we have a discontinued operation? Well, we should be careful about its presentation in the financial statements. Here, you do not measure or account for anything, but you should be careful how you show individual items in the financial statements. In the statement of comprehensive income, you should show one single amount comprising of post-tax profit or loss of discontinued operations. So you're not showing individual expenses and revenue in line items. You just group them into one amount. And also this single amount contains post-tax gain or loss recognized on the measurement to fair value less cost to sell or on the disposal of the discontinued operations. Well, closer analysis of this single amount shall be presented either in the notes to the financial statements or in the statement itself. In the statement of cash flows, you should present net cash flows attributable to the operating, investing and financing activities of a discontinued operations, but this can also be presented in the notes to the financial statements. In the statement of financial position, you should present separately on its face assets held for sale and assets and liabilities in the disposal groups classified as held for sale. 
Well, let me remind you that here there are no exceptions like for measurement. So when you classify some financial asset as held for sale, you present it separately as held for sale under IFRS 5, but you measure it under IFRS 9 because this is a measurement exception. We have just summarized the standard IFRS 5, non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. And if you'd like to learn a bit more, you're welcome to check ifrsbox.com, subscribe to our free newsletter and receive many useful IFRS articles, videos and other materials. Bye bye and thank you for watching.